Hey guys, this is Quoth, and today I would like to share my Necromancer build and some thoughts on running new attack with it. This is again mainly consolidation of my experience from 1000 runs I did to get the destruction keys and some aftermath. I will follow the same approach with first part talking about why to farm new attack, second will be the roundup of my Necromancer build, third one essential how to's, and lastly couple of sample runs to illustrate everything. Let's get into it. Alright, so why would you actually run Nilothak? So area where Nilothak resides has level 84 and Nilothak himself is monster level 95. Essentially any item and rune in the game can drop here, but these are by far the last purposes on why to farm him. The primary reasons are destruction keys if you are farming torches, and experience if you are running for that level 99. I would also note that getting grand chance from Nilothak for future rerolling is probably the easiest between him and Diablo with Bale. Ok, let's talk about the items first. Trunk gloves as usually for FCR and poison skill damage, heart of the oak, I don't have death's web so have to use something. Then Shaco with a perfect top ace. I would argue that you better put their soul rune for damage reduction or perfect ruby for more life. Then uh, Maras for resistances and plus 2 to all skills to boost your battle orders. Usual spirit on the swap uh, and enigma. Then Alder's boots for again 50 to life to increase the pool and fire res. Dwarf star to get more life and fire absorb to counter the corpse explosion from Nilothak. Arachnid mesh for more faster cast rate and plus 2 skills. And I have one ring with 10 FCR called resin damage reduced by 2 that basically yeah, just rounds up my FCR to 125 breakpoint. On the swap I have CTA with 6 bow and again a spirit. As for charms, I have one skiller with 20 life, uh, gids, and basically the assortment of uh, 20, 19 to life for higher life pool. And just a few MF charms to cover some resistances if I need, but literally, yeah, you could really swap it out with more life charms. Necro torch and any. So on the main hand I have uh, capped fire res, cold and poison, so I think fire is the most important and I have enough strength and everything else in vitality. 262 MF and as you can see I hit the cast rate breakpoint 125, high run walk and hit recovery 55 from spirit. 18% damage reduction with 2 flat reduction which is basically enough. My merc is varying infinity. Fortitude and Rald and the Visage. So I opted out from Delirium because I can actually cast Confuse myself, so I think that's fine. As for the skills, in the Curses I have 1 point in Amp Damage, 1 point Dim Vision and 1 point Confuse and Attract, which you can use both of them. Poison and Bone skills. I almost max Corpse Explosion for higher radius, just to get most mobs killed easily and Poison Nova with all the synergies are maxed out. In the summoning skills it's a little bit different to your usual Poison Nova Necromancer because we only care about Iron Golem and to make it survive Poison Clouds and uh, Corpse Explosion maxed Golem Mastery for the maximum life. He has 8000 life before battle order so it's actually pretty enough for him to handle most of the dangers there. Alright, let's talk about map. There are three possible routes from Waypoint in Halls of Pain to Halls of Ward. After trying all of them, this one is the easiest to teleport through due to straight line and no walls on the way, and also seems to be the fastest among the three of them. The location of Nilothak platform doesn't seem to matter much, and up for your personal preference. I tried two different ones and both were comfortable. Very important factor here though is 
how crowded the area around his platform. This will determine how safe your runs will be. Ideally, you will need to test across 50 runs how often you get multiple packs spawned behind the platform or very close before it. More mobs means higher risk of getting witches and snakes. If you consistently getting lots of density in the platform area, consider re-rolling the map. For experience hunting, there is a possibility to roll two shrines on the way to the third level and one on the third level, increasing the chances to spawn XP shrine, but you need to be very efficient to utilize those. Alright, now about basically killing the Nihlothak. Here is a sequence that I use and why. So I TP inside the area and based on the situation take the position behind the platform. You do not want to be close to the sideways as more mobs can come through. Cast Amp Damage on Nilathak. Take a sidestep from your Merc and Golem to avoid extreme damage from Poison Clouds. When you are stacked on each other there is no delay in the damage ticks and that is why it hits so hard. Then you have two options. Casting Attract a few times to distribute the aggro and make sure that no witches or snakes will fire at you from behind the screen. Or casting Confuse to cover the entire screen. Confuse will not override Nihlatak's amp damage. Option 1 provides you first and next corpses much faster, but higher risk. Option 2 takes a bit longer to get first corpse and subsequent ones, but way safer. This is what I opted in in the long run. After curses you start spamming poison nova to reduce health of the mobs. And as soon as the first mob is down you start spamming corpse explosion. And general note on the mobs, if you see any of the following combinations consider saving and exiting. As for the items, just forget about picking up anything, just watch things drop and save and exit. Well well ok, if you are brave enough remember the following, do not teleport for your loot. You can easily get multiple poison jabs thrown at you and instantly die with Merc and Golem. Unless you are absolutely sure there is no one left. Here is exactly how I reap trying to pick up the key. Instead, walk to your loot. As for what to pick up, considering the main reasons why running this area, avoid picking up 95% of stuff that you normally do. High mid runes, high TC or grail uniques, some jewelry, grand and small charms and keys. That would be pretty much it. It is too dangerous to pick up lots of stuff and ID in this area. As for benchmark, under 30 seconds is a decent runtime for a necromancer. I imagine with Deathsweb it will be a little faster. And here are a couple of sample runs just to illustrate majority of what I've said. Let me know if you have any further tips for Necromancer, I would be curious to know. That will wrap up the video, thank you for watching and have a good day.